guys, welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a DC Spotlight. You guys have been asking and asking and asking, so this week I'm going to talk to you about dwarf puffer fish. They are cute, sassy, easy to sex, and greetable. So let's take a look and I'll tell you more about them. Pea puffers have lots of common names. My favorites are pea puffer or dwarf puffer, but their Latin name is Carinotredodon trivanochloricus. They are an Indian species that started gaining some serious popu popularity in the early 2000s. They are super petite. Biggest size is one inch. You can see here a male and a female, and I'll go into more about how to sex them shortly. I pulled them into my holding container for you guys and dropped in a bunch of pest snails and some dried krill just to keep them looking a little bit more outgoing for you. I also dropped in a Barrara so you can get an idea about their scale. As you can see, puffers love shellfish. They don't actually eat the shell, which is different from the larger puffers. They just eat the body. And this makes them easier to feed in the aquarium. They'll readily take blood worms, white worms, any frozen or live small worms, or even freeze-dried foods. You do need to take caution though in stocking them with fish with flowing fins as those teeth are also really good at nipping finnage. Now I don't find these guys to be very aggressive in that way as long as you give them enough space and a really well structured aquarium. And by that I mean lots of tangles of wood or decor, lots of plants and things that break up their line of sight so that if they see something moving they don't automatically have a straight path for it to be prey. Now in an ideal world, you would stock more females to males of these guys because the males are super amorous. Um, I happen to have four males and one female, which is less than ideal, but I keep them in a 150 gallon tank. So, so far it's worked out pretty well. It can be challenging to get the right gender ratio with these guys because normally when they're imported, they're extremely tiny about the quarter of the size of these guys. And they're usually pretty thin. Puffers are hard to medicate and are prone to intestinal parasites. So it's really important to do your research before you buy them and make sure you get them from a reputable source. Now, despite their fragile nature, I find them to be really unassuming as far as conditions go, taking a range of temperatures from low 70s to low 80s, pH from mid sixes all the way up to eight, but I prefer to keep them in a mid seventies tank with a neutral environment. Now, if these guys are fed well and kept in an appropriate tank, you'll often start to see babies just showing up. They are very breedable. The males get extremely bright and chase the females constantly, biting and nipping at them. They'll go into a densely planted area and release the eggs in the mill at the same time. The eggs are super teeny and transparent, and they don't really stick to anything. It's a relatively small yield each time, meaning not a ton of babies. The eggs hatch after about five days, and then in another two to three, they'll use up that egg sac, at which point you need to start feeding them micro worms or other teeny tiny foods. Now the fry can be kind of aggressive to each other, so it's best to separate by size. You'll get the best yield if you pull the eggs and rear them in a separate container. Anecdotally, it's often said that males also have what eye wrinkles, and that's a way to sex them. And you can see that on these. There's the female in the middle there. You can see her spots. She's got a lot more smaller spots. Her belly is white. She's not as brightly colored. And her patterning is kind of random. At maturity, the males are substantially brighter. Their spots are bigger and can have a bluish sheen. And if you look right behind their eyes, you can see these little blue wrinkles. Now this can be hard to tell in a shop, especially because they don't exhibit their best coloration. And they're usually stressed and a bit thin in stores. The males also can get a black ridge on their abdomen, which is yellow rather than white, which you can see here on that fish to the right. All in all, they're extremely inquisitive, fun little fish, but you can see how the males are sparring in this little container. You can see the eye wrinkles on the fish on the left. 
And in this con holding container with no decor, they are chasing each other almost constantly. And that's why it's so important to have a well-structured tank. It's the female again on the left. And when you look at them in a store, you want to find ones that have as round a belly as possible. Their fins in really good shape and that are acting like these guys are, really inquisitive and outgoing. And that can be just a sign of vitality. Here you can see the, the comparison in color from male to female. They're really adorable and they are exceptional at eating snails, though they, they tend to gravitate towards eating the smallest snails, not always the adult. So they're not always the most efficient uh, choice for snail removal, which is why I prefer to manually remove snails. These guys are getting pretty sassy, so I'm going to get them back in their display tank. I hope you guys enjoyed this little lesson on puffers. All in all, a really neat little fish. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. Make sure you stop by my Facebook as well as my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. The next event I will be at will be the Aquatic Experience in Schaumburg, Illinois, the greater Chicago area. I hope to see lots of you there. Make sure you stop by and say hello. As always, if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions, let me know below.